So in this one, we have an issue with plugging in negative 1. We can't plug in negative 1 into that function because it's, it's undefined, right? You can't have 0 in the denominator, right? So it's undefined. Now, is it a whole or an asymptote? I don't know offhand. But what we could do is, you know, I remember I told you guys you could always graph, 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 look at graph. But don't forget, don't forget your algebraic properties. Guys, you should be trained by now. If you see a trinomial, you should automatically think to factor, right? So if I factor this to x minus 5 times x plus 1 all over x plus 1, those divide out, which that means x plus 1 is a whole at x equals negative 1, right? And therefore, I'm just left with x minus 5. Now, can I apply direct substitution? Yeah, this isn't that bad. Negative 1 minus 5 equals negative 6. Let's look at what the graph looks like. Because if you had a graphing calculator, your graph would look something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 1. Your graph would look something like that. But it's important for you guys to know where the hole exists. Because does your graphing calculator show you holes? No, it doesn't show holes. It doesn't show asymptotes. So that's why it's very important algebraically for you guys to know where a hole exists. But again, getting back to that point, I mean, you know, Dave mentioned like it doesn't matter if there's a hole at negative one. We're not look, we don't care about the hole at negative one. We care about what value are we getting closer to from the left and the right. And you guys can see from the left and right, are we approaching the same value? Yes. And what is that value? Negative six. Yes. Is that the line? Negative six or negative? Yeah. No. One, two, three, four, five. The, the, the y ask y intercepts that negative five. Right? That's a six. Not the best graph. Okay? We okay so far? You guys want a hard one? <laughs>